For more analysis of this is European Parliament member Luis Garicano. He is standing by in Madrid. He's also a vice president of Renew Europe. That's a political group within the parliament. Thank you so much for joining us. So it was pretty surprising news to hear that the uh, that you know European leaders were considering weaning themselves off of Russian oil. But it's sort of a measured approach, right? The first six months it would be crude oil, and then a year for uh, more refined products. You think that that's not the right approach. What plan do you think should be put in place? I think we need to recognize that we are in a war economy situation. We need to recognize that we are. In, a, in an extreme situation, the Ukrainians are, are fighting for all of our freedoms and that we need to be willing to incur bigger economic costs to, to, to support them. The truth of the matter is, until now, Europe has supported Ukraine with 12 billion euros. And with the purchases of oil and gas, we have already transferred 50 billion yeah. euros, four times as much to Putin. So we need to stop this oil and gas purchase as soon as possible. So this is insufficient because it takes too long and because gas is not included. Okay, so you're proposing something else, which I think is quite interesting, a tariff on Russian energy. Explain that idea. Yes, the idea is that uh, we can use a tariff to make sure that those who desperately need the gas and the oil can get it at the higher prices that the tariff would involve. We would take out some of the surplus that from the European consumers that uh, Russia is right now extracting and put it back in the hands of the European consumers, the tariff um, the money collected through the tariff would be given back to the uh, European taxpayers by the European states. So it's a way to reduce the income that Russia gets, start in, in, in using the substitution and uh, allow the consumers who most need it to consume, continue consuming in the transition. And then we can raise the tariff little by little or fast mm -hmm. until we win ourselves completely of oil. So what you're, what you're describing, though, is something that's probably going to cost those states that are particularly dependent on Russian uh, energy products. It's going to cost them more to get the products that they need. Hungary has rejected the proposal. Uh, Slovakia and the Czech Republic both want a longer transition period time. Have you spoken to the leaders of any of those countries about this? We talk to politicians from these countries every day in Parliament as we are negotiating all of these all of these packages, and basically. What is happening is that uh, indeed Hungary, the Czech Republic, and Slovak uh, Slovakia are depending on a pipeline, the Brukba pipeline that comes from, from Russia, and they are landlocked, so they don't have easy access to, to oil coming from, from sh by ship. Uh, so they are obstaculizing, they want more money and more time indeed. I hope that during the weekend they will be on board. And Greece is the other country that is complaining because most of the oil is transported by Greek tankers. So those are the countries that are kind of being difficult. The main obstacle, however, was Germany until just very recently, and Germany is on board. And mm -hmm. in Europe, when Germany is on board, things happen. So I, I'm pretty confident this will happen. This was the also, also the concern that I had, not, not just about oil and gas from Russia, but also sanctions. I thought, if this war ends tomorrow, do things go right back to where they were before? Is this about a permanent shift away from dependency on Russian oil? I think it should be. Mm -hmm. I think Europe is determined with the Green New Deal to kind of move completely out of fossil fuels and particularly Russian ones. But the truth of the matter is the temptation will be huge going back to the status quo to release the sanctions. I think until Russia is not really fully out of Ukraine and poses no threat to Ukraine, we shouldn't remove the sanctions. So it should be a, an approach that forces Putin to really take back all of this aggression from 2014 before the sanctions disappear. Uh, Luis, thank you so much. My pleasure.